What a wonderful day of praise. You could just feel the Spirit of God moving through. It's what happens when we come together and open up and invite Him in, let Him do what He does. Probably some things He fixed you didn't even know He fixed yet. But somewhere we'll figure it out. I'd go ahead and just praise Him anyway, because like He did it, because that's just good practice. Uh, I'm going to jump right in. I'm so glad that you're here. Don't forget, we've got some great things coming up. Of course, PAC kicks off um, after next weekend. So make sure that you're coordinated with that. We've got a, a Life Leaders Lab coming up. Um, I've started meeting with people. That's so much fun and enjoying getting to know everybody better and better. Yes, Lord. And then... Um, we just got so many things that you have to keep coordinated with and make sure that you're availing yourself to. And uh, <laughs> um, those pictures are funny. We want to make sure that we're, we're getting everything that we need because our, our role, remember, is to, to, to get better at being like Christ, right? To manifest the presence, the reign of Christ on the earth. So it's good that we come together and praise and and we learn and those things are extremely important. But if we're not applying them in our life, if we're not increasing, then we're not doing something right. So that's very, very important to us. It's very, that's my life passion goal, breathe, eat. If we don't, if we don't increase and get better and grow and manifest the kingdom of God doesn't do any good to talk about it, to praise, to sing. We've got to be able to see that in our lives, right? So I'm going to jump in today because I want to get through uh, a little bit of this. I don't want to take long, but I want to give you what I call the kingdom template, which is very, very important. And I, I realize sometimes that we, we miss this, and so I want to I wanna give you a little piece of this and give you something that I think will really help you to apply in your life. Because if, it, if, if we can't apply it, then it's no good, right? Y'all can talk back. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in. I don't want to, I, don't, I really don't want to be long, but I, this is obviously... Uh, probably one of the dearest things to my heart because I think it, it, when you talk about a template, you're talking about a pattern or a form or a mold or some kind of guide to make something, right? That's what a, that's, that's what a template is. And if you have the wrong template, you make the wrong thing. I must've went over y'all's head on that one. Let me say that again. If you have the wrong template, then you make the wrong thing, right? If you build according to the wrong pattern, we know that you build the wrong thing. So it's very important to have a, a kingdom template. Now, this is, this is right out of God's manual. This is right from his manual. And this, is, this has been around since he started time. There, there wasn't time before God started it. He started the start, began the beginning. So when he started it, and gave us time, which is how we, how we function, time, place, and matter. Those are the things that we function in. And time, time is the gift that he gave us, and, and, and we have to use that time to do what he's called us to do. So when he started time, he gave us this template, and this is long standing, meaning it's been ever since the beginning, God started this, this template this pattern, and it's never changed. Nowhere in the Bible. If you get this and really, I hope you'll meditate beyond what I give you today. If you really get this, it'll change how you read much of the Bible. Because you realize that what happens is we get influenced by stuff and then we take our theology to the Bible to prove it. I came to be sweet and loving today. But y'all have to reciprocate that and smile and love me back and say yes, yes. Because if not, I'll take you through some stuff and we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll scramble our brains if you want to. You don't realize how much we take stuff to the Bible to, to prove it. Let me say it this way. If, you, if it, I, I'm theologically trained. What does that mean? It means I can make the Bible say anything I want it to. 
We have to have the Spirit of God. We have to have each other. That's why we have to have a proper template. So it's very, un, it's very important, when, when, and I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this day to start because it's very important to understand that we have to build by his template or we get things out of, out of whack. Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 28. I think they're going to throw this on the screen. If not, it's, it's uh, Genesis 1, 28. I'm going to read out of the, the New King James Version. doesn't matter. The wording's a little bit different. There you have it. Verse 28, chapter 1, book of Genesis, better sheet. Then God blessed them. It's talking about man. So he made man in his image according to his likeness. Verse 28, he says, then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break down every word for the sake of time. But here's what I want you to I want you to get. I'm gonna start with this pattern, and then we we we'll kind of develop it and look at how we we get this out of whack. The pattern that God gave was be, do, have. Be do have. Be do have. That's the that's the pattern. Be do have. Be do have. I promise you this will revolutionize your life. It'll elevate your life if you get this. I want you to let go of what you think you know today. And just open your mind and, and, and let God speak to us. It's not that we, we don't know this, but sometimes we get this out of order because everything in the world system is designed to twist that. We do have. Say B. B. Say it stronger. B. B. Do. do. Have. That is, the, that is the pattern. God said, be fruitful and multiply. It's the first thing that he said. Be fruitful and mu- multiply. What is, what is fruit? That's what fruitful means. Be fruitful, fruit. What is fruit? Fruit has a seed in it. God said, the seed's in you. The seed of what you need is in you. The purpose of that seed is to get it out from the inside and manifest it on the outside. Take the pattern of heaven... On the earth and take it from from inside you and put it on the outside. The first thing God does in introducing himself to man, and that's very important. When when God steps up on the scene and says, hello, I'm God. The first thing that he introduces us to is important. Word, order, precedence, order is always important. And the first thing that he does is says, I'm a creator. I'm a creator. I'm creative. And then he says, I made you in my image, in my likeness. Therefore, you are, three of you are. You are, don't ever get, don't ever get so long in this thing we call our walk with God that we don't learn how to speak. I'm never going to outgrow myself that I don't talk to myself. I'm creative. I'm creative. Just like my creator, I'm creative. That's very important, as you're going to see today. Very important. The ability to create something seemingly out of nothing. It's already there. He already made it, but I've got to speak it. I've got to be creative. I've got to understand that if I don't think I can create anything, oh, help me, this is going to be so good for y'all. If I don't believe that I can create anything, then I am simply victim to the circumstances that surround my life and I can't change them. But if I can create stuff, then I can speak and create things. So God said, be. Be fruitful. Take from the inside that which I put on the inside and bring it to the outside. Every single person has that capacity and ability. Then he said, do. 
He said, fill and subdue. Now, the the implied verb here, right? Be fruitful. You can't do fruitful. He didn't say do fruitful. He said, be fruitful. Because you can't do fruitful. That's important. Be. Be fruitful. Then subdue and fill. The implied verb here, because the Hebrew language is different than the, the English language, the implied verb here is do. You have to do this. So he said, the pattern that you have to live your life with, if you're going to take the kingdom of heaven and manifest it in your life, and not just do religion, but manifest the kingdom of heaven on the earth, in your family, in your business, let me be king in that place, manifest the the reign of Christ, is you have to first be, then you have to do. And by doing, you're learning how to feel, subdue, how to manage what you've created. If you don't learn how to manage it, then it'll get away from you. But you cannot manage until you first be. When you learn to speak and create, and then you learn to, to feel and multiply, to manage, to grow what I've given you, then you can have have dominion we don't want you to have dominion over anything until you learn how to be (laughs) God said I love you too much to let you have until you learn how to do and then you have to first be before you learn how to do Now, this is in direct opposition to the world system. What is God most concerned with in your life? Being. What you become. Don't look shocked at that. (laughs) What is God's concern with me? What am I becoming? Am I becoming like him? He's concerned about my job and he's concerned about my bank account. No, 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 no. You say, but I thought he loves me. He does. But if he fixes those things, you'll just mess them up again. So he said, what I'm going to do is teach you how to be. Because what I'm concerned about is you being. And anything you become takes time that's why I gave you the gift of time so you have to become and anything you become takes time anything that you decide if you decide to become a musician and play the piano you're not going to walk over there start stroking on the keys if you want to play the drums You have to spend time. If you want to learn how to do anything, you have to spend time becoming. So God said, I'm going to walk through the process of life with you. And what I am focusing on is what you are becoming. Because what you are becoming will take care of everything else. If you become like me and learn to create stuff and speak the word then you will automatically have the capacity in in who you are and who I made you to manage these things and do these things and fill spaces and places. You will learn how to subdue things, to put them under and manage and not subdue people, but to manage things. But the pattern of the world is what? Do, have, be. Work real hard. Do all you can. And then you can have stuff. And then if you want to, you can be something. I'm not going to even spend time 
taking you through that, you ought to know without any doubt that that's the world system and how it's built. It's designed to circumvent. That's what the enemy always does. We know this. He'll do anything that he can to circumvent God's plan. So what does he do? Did God really say? That's the first temptation of Eve. It's interesting because God goes, you can have everything in the garden. Everything in the garden. Everything here is yours. Except that right there. The enemy comes in and his focus to Eve is on lack. That's the first focus that he puts, that, that he puts against God. Lack. You can't have that. And Eve used the same thing you and I try to use that never works, willpower. She tried to use willpower against the enemy. How's that working for you? It ain't. And you can try to have as much willpower as you want to have. But the only way you get past that is by becoming so the world system says, no, 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 no. You do, and then you have, and then you can worry about becoming. You don't need to wait on all that. I'll circumvent that process. So all throughout Scripture, you don't have to wait Abraham to have a baby. We could go through this all day long. It's how the system of the enemy derives, and it is, he's very good at it. But this one pattern can change your entire life. The first thing you have to always, the, the thing you have to always keep first is my being. Because that's what God walks with us through. The rest of it will take care of itself. If I can teach you to be like me on the earth from the pattern of heaven. And how to create the right things and how to fill those things. The having the stuff. Y'all, y'all remember the teaching of Jesus? You ever read that? Y'all know I mess with you. Jesus said the exact same thing. He said the exact same thing. Seek first being in the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. The kingdom has to be in you. Then all the stuff will take care of itself. We get so caught up without knowing it on having stuff. Because the world says if you have that, you'll be this. If you have that car that you've been coveting that somebody drove up in, then you'll be cool. You'll be successful if you can have that job so the whole system is designed for you to do to have and this is the bad news I'll follow up with the good news it seeped right through our doors into the church and our theology now we grab our cosmic bellhop and we go ding 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 God I'm going to quote some scriptures and I need you to jump on it and get me what I need because that's your job, to get me what I want, to bless me. I, am, I have been in the Bless Me Club for 35 years. A long-standing member. They'll probably elect me president next year. Therefore, as I quote these scriptures, you dip down from heaven and get me what I need. Then we get mad. When we put in our tokens and pull our handle and it doesn't go jackpot. I'm just as guilty as you are. It's easy to get to. And God goes, Man, son, I love you. I love you, daughter. But that is not my role. I am not worried about the have. I'm worried about the be. And I mean, aren't we glad at the end of the day that he's gracious and loving and kind enough 
to let us walk through and figure out that my role is to be. That all I have to do is put my focus on be and then the do and the have comes. That it's in me. But the, the, the challenge is, is that when we get focused on the have, we're focused on circumstances. I have to have this. I have to have this. And then we create a theology behind it that goes, God wants me to have this. Now that have is, is different for each of us and we fill it in and we get real spiritual with it. <laughs> you know, I like to come down when I'm dramatic. When I want to do my theatrics, I come down here. So I can act out on the stage. <laughs> if the enemy can get me to put have in the front, and then he can fill it in with something that's good that God wants me to have, <laughs> I'll fight like a devil to get it because God wants me to have it. I got to have my healing. Oh, that's a sacred cow. You telling me I can't have my healing? Absolutely. But if you don't think the enemy's good at trying to put that in front of being, and God goes, no, 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 I, I got your healing. I'm good. I'll heal. I, I'm, 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 I'm there. But I don't always do it the way that you think I'm supposed to. Now, we can find examples where God's grace supersedes. and I'm all for that. But I ain't talking about God. He's good. I'm talking about you and I. And he can put things in front that I have to have. And since we all have a need sometimes to have, I do so that I can have. And we hear it in our language. I've been praying. I've been believing. I've been working. I want this. And God goes, that, that's good. But I, I, I'm, I'm over here trying to get you to be. I need you to be. Because if you be, everything else will line up. It's so important that there's, there's a whole teaching from Jesus called be. Attitudes. Be attitudes. Your attitude should be this, mirroring heaven. Probably the best story that I can give you to illustrate this would be out of John chapter 5, 1 through 9. You can look it up later. Don't read it right now because I don't want you to miss what we're talking about. You can read it and should read it later. John chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. The story will be familiar to you, even if you don't know its placement or where it's at. It's the story of the, of the lame man, invalid man, 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. The sheep gate, the pool, Bethesda many different translations of it, but essentially the man sitting invalid at this gate for 38 years. He's trying to get into the water when they get stirred so that he could get his healing. And Jesus comes to him and asks the funniest question in the world when you read this and you stop for a moment and take time and, and, and slow down. And when you slow down and read the Bible, amazing thing happens. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Jesus walks up to this man who's been laying here 38 years. 38 years this man's been in bondage. He's been sick. He's been dependent on people. Can you imagine a life where, could you imagine what that would do to you? Hey, would you mind carrying me down today? I can't get down to the pool. Would you mind... Helping me get, can you go get me some groceries? Could, could you imagine what this man has done for 38 years? And Jesus steps on the scene, comes up to this man and goes, do you want to get healthy? <laughs> do you want to get healthy? That's, that's the question? Like, really? But we know that Jesus is not asking the question because he doesn't know the answer. 
You need to jot that down and remind it too. Because sometimes when God asks you questions, we forget. He's not after the answer. He's after you finding the answer to come to the right conclusion. And we, it, the most amazing part of this story is this man's 38 years. I want you to see this, this pattern. B. Do, have. Not do, have, be. This man is a picture of a do, have, be. Jesus said to him, 38 years. That's the same age as me, y'all. 38 years. Round about, don't get technical on the numbers, 38 years, that's, that, that's a long time. And he goes, he asks him, do you want, and so first you go, wow, that's not, okay, well, I know what Jesus is doing, he's asking, do you want to be well? What is the answer if you've been 38 years sick, diseased, dependent, can't move, and Jesus, who can heal you, goes, do you want to be well? What's the answer? That's my answer. There's two kinds of yes. Yes and yes, sir. I know which kind y'all were thinking of. A bunch of worldly carnal people. Yes, sir. I would like to be healed. But nowhere in this passage does this man go, yes, I want to be healed. Why? Because his pattern is do, have, be. So he did the do. He did the do. The do was, hey, can you guys carry me down to the pool of Bethesda so I can get healed? So he did the do. So now he's looking for the have. And Jesus said, do you want to be well? He doesn't go, yes, sir, I would love that. I'm kind of tired of being carried around by my friends. No. What does he do? Well, the reason that I can't be well, he goes right into excuses. I want you to see this because it's, <laughs> it's, it's so good for us to get these things. It helps us to coordinate with what God's doing in our life. And he goes, uh, well, here's the reason I'm not healed. because, And he goes into circumstances same thing you and I do we are guilty as can be God goes do you want me to elevate your life well God I, my boss you, you don't understand she's a devil God I can't see the horns but I'm telling you she's holding me back if you could wipe her out in Jesus name and I love her and I pray for her. but wipe her out I'll be able to do some stuff for you and bless her real good too Lord it's real good he goes no here's my circumstance that's what we do and when you start looking at circumstance too much then we get real spiritual and stop being practical and he starts telling Jesus well, the reason I can't is because the circumstances around me. I am a victim of my circumstances. You don't understand. I was spending a little coaching time this week with somebody, and I was, I was reminded of this, which had this in my spirit, and talking with them, it came back, and I realized how easy it is for us to do this. A very successful person. The reason I can't go to the next level is because of these circumstances. And they got caught in the do, have, be model. And the only way that God lets you graduate and grow is when you become something greater than you were and can manage what he's allowing to, give, to, to come to you so that it doesn't destroy you. Because he loves you too much to let you have something that you haven't become on the inside.
And it, it, it amazes me that this, this man goes, no, here's the problem. Here's the challenge. I've got all these circumstances you don't understand. And I'm sure he probably could have gone through his, his whole lineage, how his mom didn't treat him right, and somebody did this, and this happened, and I had this happen, and you just don't understand. And I had this one friend that used to help me, but he left me, and, and then they started making fun of me, and, and, and on and on and on and on we go. Exactly what we do. We do it at every level of our growth. We go, the circumstances are against me. Now watch. Oh, I know this is going to bless you like it has me. I know it. Do have, do have be means I did something and now I'm looking to have. And God goes, that's not the precedence of how I want you to build. And Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made whole? Not because he didn't know the answer, but because he knew this man. And he knew this man had no intent on changing his life. He knew this man had no intent on changing his life. I'm almost done. The operative word in that sentence was almost, which is variable and can mean a lot of things. So don't get your hopes too high. He said, do you want to be made whole? Because he knew that this man had no intent of changing his life. He'd been doing this for 38 years. It amazes me sometimes when you watch People who follow Christ, who go to church, who praise God, who fellowship, who read their Bible, but have no intention of elevating their lives. Now, you may not have a belief system that goes, I, I don't need to elevate my life. I'm just, well, you need to come to the Occupy, please, so we can help you. Because the Bible is replete with God saying, I need you to increase. No intention of elevating their lives. And here's what I, here's what I want you to get. This is the, this is the truth, okay, that goes, that goes with having the right pattern. B, God is constantly working on my being. Never stop. He will never stop working on my being. That is a lifelong journey. We have not arrived. We have not become everything. We've become everything in Christ. But then we have to manifest that on the earth. That's our entrance to be with God forever is through Christ. That's why I need him because I can't get there on my own. But on the earth, I have to manifest that, I have to become, so God is constantly working on my being. And this man, because his pattern was backwards, did something and was looking to have something, and God said, listen, Christ says to him, listen to me, do you want to be well? I don't believe you want to be well. And here's why, because your pattern's wrong. We love, if you're taking notes, write this down, memorize this statement, it'll help you. It keeps us on point. We love the idea of God changing our circumstances more than changing us. We love the idea of God changing our circumstances far more than we like the idea of God changing us. We love the idea of God changing our circumstances far more than we like him changing us. That's why if you listen to our prayers sometimes, <laughs> it's asking God to change this. Deal with them. Fix them. I know they're a good person, God. I love them, and I know you love them. But fix them. 
they all busted and broke. Now, we're far more spiritual to pray that raw. We dress it up and flower it and make it good. But think about your prayers for a moment. I did mine. I realized that I had a lot of circumstantial prayer. God fixed the circumstance. Boy, y'all was right up with me until this one. And then just, it just. I walk alone in a lonely valley. If we put our emphasis on God always fixing our circumstance, i.e. deliver us out of Egypt. And our prayer is, God, if you'll airlift me out <laughs> and put me on the mountaintop, I'll serve you like there's no tomorrow, God. Oh, if you fill my bank account, God, oh, I'll give you a bunch of money. Lord, you know I will. Well, that's a good deal, yeah. You give me a million dollars, God, I'll give you 90%. But that's not God's pattern. He goes, Don, I, I, I'm not going to answer that. I love you. But you're going to stay in them circumstances until. Ain't trying to change them. Trying to change you. You can't change nobody. Ooh, that was deep. Boy, I felt the Holy Ghost. Mm. Mm. You can't change nobody. Mario, if you was on the piano right now, we could do something. You don't, no, don't, don't go over there. Don't go over there. He started to, don't go. It's, <laughs> you can't change nobody. So why do we have to try and pray and act like that's not our job? We know this. I'm not telling you something you don't know. I'm just giving it to you in a different perspective. That's all. You know this. It's not revelation as much as it's revitalization. It's we revi You know what? I got to stop praying for stuff to change around me and, and, and my prayer. Back to Sunday school. It's me. It's me. It's me. Oh, Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. And God said, I'm, I'm not... If I change your circumstances, nothing happens. You're the same person in a different place with the same stuff. So he said, I, I know you, you think you want to be healed. What you really want is just to be fixed. You, 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 you think if you could just get that, then it would be okay. Do you know how many times we're six inches away from our miracle we believe? Because if we could just get that new job, that new car, that new mate, that new fill in the blank, that it's going to fix something? And God goes, nah, nah, I love you too much for that. Let's work on becoming. And if we get more committed to God changing our circumstance... Then changing us, we have the wrong focus. We're back in the do have be model. And it's, it's, it's easy to find that model. It's everywhere. You just put it in the spiritual microwave with some scriptures and hit the button and you got it. I'm a king's kid. God wants me blessed. That is a truth. But God's way of blessing is different than mine. He said, I want you to enjoy it. I don't want it to crush you. I don't want you to fall under the weight of that. So we're going to spend your whole life. And the, the quicker you figure this out, the better it gets. Because you go, okay. All right. I guess it isn't them. I guess it isn't the job. I guess it isn't the economy or the president or whatever else we want to blame. It's not my bank account. <laughs> Those things can contribute, but they don't determine. They don't stop me from becoming Christ-like. Becoming more like him. 
So as I begin to say, God, I want to work on me. I want to focus on what I need to do. Then God goes, okay. And the next thing you know, your life begins to elevate. And all of a sudden, those circumstances may still be present. Probably will be. But they won't bother you or hinder you anymore. The, the danger of this in closing, number one, first closing. The danger of this is it keeps us on the run. It keeps us on the run. Y'all don't forgot last week's message. Y'all act like that can't tie in. <laughs> There's no provision in the run. There's no, no provision in running. Provision is in becoming. As I become what God's ordained me to be, there's provision. There's as much provision as I ever need. There's so much provision when I find that space that I'm obligated to give some of it to bless other people to help them. And this, this man is in a place of looking for his, his, his circumstance to get fixed. And he said, I'm not going to fix your circumstance. I'm going to deal with you. It's a picture. It's a picture. It's a picture of us being at a level and invalid and incapable of doing something. And willpower will not get you there. Willpower will not resist the devil. So just quit doing that and stop. save your time and your energy. It is by letting God work through me that I'm able to do those things. And I stop looking at my circumstance and I go, now, God, let me rise above that. And then I don't care what the circumstance is. My desire should not be, God, fix, fix my relationship, my child, my job, my finances, that person. Work on me. Set me free from me. Help me to become what you want me to be. Help my focus to be on becoming. Then the doing and the having is automatic. They, 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 they come together. They're easy. Do Have and be is the world system model. It's everywhere. Penetrates everything. That's why it is important, as fundamental and basic as it is, that I stay in my word and I stay in his presence daily. Because only by him helping me become what he's called me to be, can I do and I have. And you'll never enjoy. We, 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 we know this. We don't even have to, we, we don't have to do anything but just read stories. You'll never enjoy the have if you don't have the be. Amen. The have will make you miserable. Because you can't have enough. It'll never be enough. It'll never satisfy you. Because the only thing that satisfies you is be. As you become Christ-like. That's the, that's the kingdom pattern. That's the shift that God is doing with us. This is the original. He's taking us back to the original. And if you try to speak things into a distance and, use, and, 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 and into existence and use your creativity without being, God goes, oh, no, uh -uh. that won't work. That'll crush you. Be have do. That's your word. Be have do. Be have do. You get up in the morning, you go, be have do. Be have do. When your circumstances get overwhelming, you go, be have do. Be have do. I need to be. I need to be. I need to be able to, to, to take these things and put them in, in, in. I said be have do. I had it backwards. Be do have. Wrong word. Be do have. I need to be so I can do, so I can have. My focus is on my being. Stand with me.
if you're like me, and you probably are, because we're all human, we share that experience together. There's no superhumans. <laughs> There's no superhumans. Y'all don't like that, do you? There's no superhumans. There's humans that God works through and uses. Told you before, we love to make people extraordinary. You know why? It lets us off the hook. If I can go, well, you know, so and so is extraordinary. They're, they're spe- they got a special thing. It lets me off the hook. But see, that's not true. God called every single person here to be great. Every single person here. That's not a little addendum to the end of a service and pat on the back to say you're special. You're special. God made each and every one of us that way. All unique, different gifts, but all of us have to become. All of us have to walk this process out. All of us have to say, Lord, I want to become what you've called me to be. And what I'm becoming is similar to you in the sense of the attributes that God gave me. But as I, as I become, then he puts me in my assignment. And so we talked about assignment last week and I realized that if we don't talk about becoming, we'll get messed up because you have to become. Then God goes, now you know, now you'll fit in your assignment. And you don't have to use any kind of silly stuff that we do sometimes to get stuff to you all you got to do is work on becoming and doing and then to having and when you get that order you get that pattern right you'll stop you'll, you'll stop looking at circumstances and people and things and the world's against me and somebody did me wrong and you'll stop every bit of that and you'll realize nobody can stop me nobody can stop me from what my appointed place of destiny is and my purpose in Christ if I become You then become unstoppable until you reach the final place that he has for you. You are unstoppable. Raise your hands with me. I want to take a moment, pray and activate this in our life. And I hope this resonates with your spirit. I believe it does. It reminds me so much of the things in my life that I've got to keep in in practice. An application because it's easy to go out because listen listen it's easy to go after stuff it's easy to do and it's easy to create a theology that puts that first because I'm going to give it all to God I'm gonna lay it down I'm gonna use it for his kingdom and I've been caught in that trap well Lord I'm gonna take over the world and get all this stuff and then I'm gonna give it to you and I'm gonna lay it down and he goes ah yeah I know I'm good I already own it all thank you but I appreciate you caring for me like that son thanks but uh, it's already mine. But what I would like you to do is become more like me so that it comes to you, you manage it, and you know what to do with it. Because if you become like Christ and he can trust you, you can give me the whole world, Lord, and I'm going to lay it at your feet because it's yours. And I'm not going to be tempted to go, ooh, look what I have. Look who I am. So when I become, and I become, and I become more like him, so now I can get these things. Now I can trust you. Now we have the doing and the having. The having stuff doesn't even matter. Having stuff is just the the, the benefit of, uh, of the blessing God goes. That's just, I'm just throwing that in for free. All the stuff you can have, that, that, that's, that, that stuff doesn't matter. That doesn't give you joy. Yeah, it's fun. But in the being, Oh, man, there's life everlasting. There is power and strength and blessing. So it gets easy to get them out of order. What I'd like to do today is activate us into a new mindset that we're all aware of, that our pattern here, our pattern here is we do have. We want to be, do, and have. We want to be mindful of that. Be mindful this week as you're praying. How's my prayers? Am I praying for God to change my circumstance because I like that better? Because I do like that better. It is easier. God, can you just change that? Can you just airlift me out? 
But that's not the prayers God's called us to pray. That's not the pattern that Jesus gave us. God, can you just fix all my problems for me? No, that's not it. We know that. So starting today, we, 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 we take a new fresh revelation as a people. That God, we want to be. We want to be like you. That's always been our heart. That's our heart. That's our desire. That's not new. But we need the framework of our mind to change so that we realize that's our priority. That when I get up in the morning, I want to say, Lord, I want to be like you today. I want to be like you in all that I do and all that I say. I want your word to fill me and strengthen me. That's our desire. Let's pray together. Let's agree together. There's power in agreement. Let's pray and agree that God is developing us, making us, and becoming what he has called us to be, to manifest the reign of Christ on the earth. Wherever you're at, you may be sitting beside the pool of Bethesda today. Say, I've been in this place for 38 years and it's been, it's felt like hell on earth. And I can't get no help. But today's the day that you say, I'm not going to focus on that. Today, today, I'm becoming like Christ. I'm becoming like him. I want his character and his attributes to saturate me so that I become so much like him that I'll be like Enoch. I'll walk and I'll be no more. It'll just be God working through me. That's my desire. And that you can have your way. And then my doing will be aligned with the kingdom. And my having will glorify you in advanced kingdom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray as your people. We stand in agreement today. Every man, woman, child. Those watching our Eve family. We stand in agreement today because I know without asking that it's our heart. It's every heart to please you, to be like you, to call upon your name, to glorify you on the earth, to fulfill our purpose that you have created us for. It's our heart cry today. So as your people in one voice in unity, we say, Lord, we want to be. We want to be like you. We want to be like Jesus on the earth. We want to become what you've called us to be. We want you to be glorified in us and through us. We want you to have your being and move through us in everything that we do. Forgive us for a wrong mindset. We destroy the pattern of this world that says, I can have without being. That if I do have and be, it's good. We destroy that pattern and that mindset. We reject it as ungodly and we decree that we will be before we do anything because that is the desire of your heart. So make us again. Renew our hearts today. Give us a desire and a passion and a love to become more like you. That even in our prayers, Lord, remind us that it is your heart for us to be in your image, made in your likeness. Help us to be creative. Help us to speak creatively. Not, not destructively, but creatively. Help us to be able to create life where there's been death, healing where there's been sickness. Because you have called us to be creative beings like you. So we receive it. We receive it in Jesus' name. We reframe our thinking today under the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit. That we would be your sons and daughters on the earth. We give you thanks. We glorify your name for the revelation that you give us as your people. We're grateful that you give it to us freely because you love us. We manifest the goodness and greatness of God in our life in this place now. Come on, just worship for a moment. Just take a moment and worship him in your own 